Hello everyone, Nir from Dugzub, and welcome to my first ever added value session. And in this session, we will cover the high level usage of DVC. Today we learn about DVC and how it can help us as data scientists in our workflow. We'll explore some of the challenges when working with DVC and how Dugzub can help you to overcome them. And last, we'll cover the high level usage of DVC with Git. So let's get this show on the road by introducing DVC. DVC stands for Data Version Control. It's a CLI tool for data scientists to manage their project, version their large files, and easily reproduce their entire project. Sounds familiar, huh? Well, you're right. DVC is very similar to Git. So why do we need another tool in our toolkit? Well, Git was originally designed for managing a software development project and to version text files or code files. Therefore, Git doesn't handle large files very well. Well, you're probably asking yourself, why not use Git LFS for this task? Well, Git LFS is better than Git for large files, but when scaling, it still doesn't provide good results. And in addition, Git and Git LFS are missing a lot of core features that we as data scientists need, such as create and reproduce a pipeline, import and track data files from different projects, and many more features that DVC has to offer. So what is DVC exactly? DVC was designed based on Git and works as an extension to it. It enables us to manage and version all of the project components, such as data, models, and metrics, and save the files locally or in a remote storage. DVC supports a lot of the cloud providers, such as AWS, Google, Azure, and many more. And it provides us the ability to reproduce results easily, even when working in teams. And as I stated, DVC handles large files better than Git and Git LFS. And last, DVC is an open source project, which is amazing to me. It supports all platforms such as Macs, Linux, and Windows. However, to store your file on a remote storage and share it with your team, DVC requires that you will have a remote storage configured with your local machine. And to do so, you will need some of a sort of DevOps knowledge. For example, you will need to sign up to a storage service, create a bucket, a user with a role, configure it permission, connect it all to your local machine, and configure it with DVC. Wow, <laughs> that was long. Well, even if you're familiar with this long process, it can still be a hassle. And this is where Dugzub comes to the rescue. We configure the DVC remote storage that automatically connects to your repository with 10 gigabytes of free storage. All you need to do is copy and paste four lines of command to your terminal, and you're all set to share your data files with your team. So how does DVC work? Let's explore the workflow of DVC with Git at a high level. In this example, we will have our local directory on the bottom right. Above it, we will have the Git tracking. And on the top right, we will have our DVC tracking. We'll start by adding a huge file to our local directory, the universe.txt. This file contains all the information that we gathered along the years about life, love, nature, neural nets, and MLOps. And because of the size of this file, we'll use DVC to track it by running the DVC add command. This action will result in three outcomes. It will save the new version of the data file to a hidden DVC cache directory. Also, it will create a pointer file to the version of the original file with a .dvc ending. This file will contain metadata about the version of the original file. I repeat, it will contain metadata about the version of the original file. Last, it will tell Git to stop tracking this file by simply adding it to the Git ignore file. Because both Git ignore and the pointer file are very small files, we'll use Git to track them. And as a rule of thumb here, we'll use Git to track every file that ends with .dvc. So let's see the current status of our local directory. And as we can see, we have our version A of the data file fully tracked by both DVC and Git. And now, let's say that we process our data differently, we feature engineer or remove some values, and created a new version of our data file, version B and we'll use DVC to track the changes. This action 
will save the new version of the data file to a hidden DVC cache directory and update the pointer file to hold metadata about the new version of the data file. Last, we'll use Git to track the new pointer file. And now let's have a little practice. You can pause the video and think about what will be the workflow to track a new version of our data file, version C. Okay, so I hope you took some time to think about the answer and let's now review the workflow together. So we will start by creating a new version of the data file, version C, and we'll use DVC to track it. This action will save the new version of the data file to a hidden DVC cache directory, and we'll also update the pointer file. And now we'll use Git to track the new pointer file. At this point of the project, we realized that the first version of the data file, version A, provides the best results. And instead of trying to remember how we process the data or rerun the entire pipeline again, all we need to do to retrieve version A of our data is simply use Git and DVC. So let's see how it happens. We'll start by using Git to retrieve the pointer file that points to version A of the original data file. We can use the git commands such as git checkout or git reset to do so. And a note here that you can use git to cherry pick which files you want to retrieve. Um, for example, let's say that you only want to retrieve the code file that processes the data and the pointer file. So all you need to do is state their name in the checkout command after the commit hash. Now, our local directory holds a pointer file that store metadata about version A of the data file and version C of the original file. At this point, we'll use DVC to retrieve the original data file. And how can we do it? If version A is held in our local cache directory, meaning that we version it on our local machine, we'll use the DVC checkout command. But if version A is held in a remote cache directory, meaning that it was versioned on a different machine and was pushed to the remote storage, we'll use the DVC pull command. And by running one of these commands, DVC will parse for the file in the cache directory that matches to the metadata in the pointer file and will retrieve it to our local directory. Now we have both of our data file and pointer in the state of version A. As simple as that, we can retrieve all of the project components to reproduce previous results, which is extremely useful for us as data scientists. By that, we covered the basic usage of DVC with Git at a high level. If you want to hear more about what we're doing at DugZub, I added some links in the description below to our blog posts, our workshops, and many more valuable information. And also, if you have requests for content that you want me to review or explain, please add it in the comment below. I want to thank you all for joining me to my first ever added value session, and I hope to see you in my next episodes. And until then, Dogs out.